Beverly, they're a long way apart, as Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, said last night, that basically he thought that this was um, the ingredients for another sort of October 7 type massacre. He's under huge pressure from his right wing here in Israel, from people like Itamar Ben Gavir, the Minister for National Security, the Finance Minister, Bezalel Smotrich, who are saying to him, if you make any deal with Hamas, we will bring down the coalition. The numbers are very tight for Benjamin Netanyahu here in the parliament, in the Knesset. So his right wing flank is saying there should be no deal, even though there's incredible pressure coming from the US, coming from Anthony Blinken. Of course, suddenly Joe Biden is facing the possibility of losing a major state like Michigan at the upcoming presidential election, where there's a large Arab American vote who are, uh, who are very angry about America's support for the war in Gaza. Yeah. I guess, though, the US president isn't keeping Benjamin Netanyahu in power, um, uh, that right block is. He, he even talked about a total victory being possible within months. Is that even plausible or is that again just to indicate that he's forging ahead? Look, I think a lot of that is political rhetoric. What does uh, complete victory actually mean uh, in Gaza for Israel? Um, in a way, uh, there's a political problem for Benjamin Netanyahu in that as long as the Hamas commander in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, is on the loose, it's very difficult politically for Benjamin Netanyahu to end this war. There's a strong sense of support inside Israel for the continuation of the war, although that is starting to erode all the time. The families of those hostages still in there, there's about 136 or so hostages. 21 of those or, or 30 of those are believed to have, have died um, and the families of those hostages are putting a lot of pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu. So he's, he's in a pincer movement from both sides. As you pointed out, um, Anthony Blinken has been in, in the region. He has been putting pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu around the human cost of this military operation. Um, do you think he, he is going to be able to have any influence on this Prime Minister at the moment? No. Uh, America has been making clear for months now uh, that it is unhappy with the huge number of civilians who Israel is killing. In the early weeks of this war, Israel was killing as many as a thousand children a week. America has said that that's not good enough, and yet Israel has not really taken note of that. The really interesting thing is Anthony Blinken's just been here in Jerusalem. He had a press conference last night. And it, listening to him, it was almost like listening to the head of an NGO. He was talking about there's 1.2, 1.4 million people who are pushed up against that Rafa crossing in Gaza. The uh, Israelis are now saying they're going to push in towards Rafa. And Anthony Blinken was saying with 1.2 or 1.4 million, he was giving those figures that that's really dangerous. And in fact, the Nor Norwegian Refugee Council has said that any move by Israel towards Rafa would be, they called, a bloodbath, and they said the world can't allow it. So it was fascinating to hear the US Secretary of State sounding like the head of the Norwegian Refugee Council. Yeah, indeed, but um, potentially falling on deaf ears. You know, the US continues its attacks. Um, uh, in your report, you, d you talked about those attacks again in Baghdad. How perilous are these attacks and, and, and could we reasonably see some form of retaliation? There seems to be a lot of anger at the US there. I think at the moment, Beverly, this is the new normal. Uh, the United States is picking off individuals as they have. That was a Hezbollah-related militia we believe in Baghdad, backed by uh, Iran, of course. And in the last couple of weeks, Israel has gone and, and assassinated a Hamas and a Hezbollah leader inside Beirut. So this targeted assassination appears to be the new normal following the killing of those three US soldiers. And so as to any retaliation, that all depends on Iran, of course, and what Iran decides to do. Iran's biggest weapon is Hezbollah in the south of Lebanon. About 140,000 missiles are pointing towards Israel in the south of Lebanon. If Iran decides to activate those missiles in Hezbollah, then we have a major conflagration here in the Middle East. At the moment, though, Iran does not seem to want a full-on war with the US. Yeah. Good to see you as always, John. Thanks so much. 
Thank you.